Okay, in our video series of infectious medicine, in this video, we are going to talk about syphilis infection. We are going to discuss the presentation, the different stages, diagnosis, and treatment of syphilis in detail. First of all, syphilis is caused by bacteria known as Treponema pallidum. Treponema pallidum is a gram-negative spiral-shaped bacteria. In this picture, you can appreciate that it is a spiral-shaped bacteria. Coming to the transmission of Treponema pallidum. Treponema pallidum is transmitted mainly through sexual route, vaginal, anal, oral contact with the lesion can transmit syphilis infection. And remember, it presents in few stages. Stage 1, the primary infection. Stage 2, the secondary infection. Stage 3, the tertiary infection. Stage 1 and stage 2 are highly contagious. In stage 1 and stage 2, there is a high risk of transmission of infection to another person. As soon as there is contact of treponema pallidum with the body, there is rapid spread via blood, via lymphatics within hours. And then this treponema pallidum binds to the endothelial cells of the vessels and causes inflammation of the vessels called as endarteritis, inflammation of the vessels. Now, why is this thing important? Because all the signs and symptoms that we are going to discuss, everything will make sense if you understand this. Since it causes endarteritis, it affects the vessels that are supplying the nerves. Therefore, the nerves do not get blood properly and the nerves die. Therefore, many of the lesions in syphilis are painless. It also affects the aorta in tertiary syphilis and aorta is also affected because the vessels are affected due to endarteritis. Clinical presentation is different for the different stage of infection. The different stages of infection of syphilis include primary infection, secondary infection, latent, early latent, late latent, and tertiary infection. We'll discuss each one of them in detail. In primary syphilis, the primary lesion is Schenker. Remember that Schenker is a raised papule mainly on the genitals, around the penis, around the anus, or even around the mouth and it identifies the type of sexual activity. Wherever there is contact of skin with the lesion, there is formation of chancre. Chancre is a painless firm ulcer with indurated border. Remember, it's a painless firm ulcer. It is painless because, as I said, that syphilis affects the vessels that are supplying the nerves. So the nerves die because they do not receive blood from the vessels and death of nerves results in the formation of ulcer which is painless. It resolves spontaneously within three to six weeks without any scarring. This is a picture showing painless chancre with indurated borders. Now coming to the secondary syphilis. In secondary syphilis there is systemic spread of bacteria eight to twelve weeks after the primary infection. After the primary infection patient starts to develop rash on the palms, on the soles, on the body. That polymorphic rash has copper color on it. This is a picture showing that polymorphic rash. You can also appreciate condyloma lata, which is a painless wart-like erosion around the anal canal. It is painless. Once again, it's painless because the vessels that are supplying the nerves are blocked. Endarteritis, inflammation of the vessels. Therefore, the nerves die and the lesions are mostly painless. There can be patchy alopecia. This is another picture showing copper colored papules, the polymorphic rash. Look at the characteristic rash of syphilis. So this was all about secondary syphilis. After primary infection, in primary infection, when the patient gets painless chancre around the penis, around the anal canal, after that, patients develop secondary infection. In secondary infection, there is systemic spread of treponema pallidum, systemic spread of syphilis, systemic rash around the palms, around the soles, around the body. After secondary syphilis, patients develop latent infection. In latent infection, patient is not having any symptoms. There are no symptoms. But the bacteria is there. But the bacteria is present in the body. Patient is infected, but patient is not showing any symptoms. When you perform the lab tests, the lab tests will show that the patient has syphilis, but patient is showing no symptoms. That is called as the latent period, the period where there are no symptoms. 
but patient has syphilis. No symptoms, but the patient is zero positive. And after the primary and secondary phase, patients can develop latent infection, and that latent infection can develop months, years, and even entire life. They may even die with that latent infection. They may not develop any symptoms. But in some cases, in almost 35% cases, this latent infection can convert into tertiary, which is a more drastic, more severe form of infection. Now coming to tertiary syphilis. In tertiary syphilis, there is gamma formation. Gamma is basically granulomatous lesion with a necrotic center. This is a deforming, ulcerative type of lesion that destroys the body. Now this is a picture of patient who has developed gammas. And these gammas are granulomatous lesion. They are destructive. They destroy the body. They are ulcerative. They are very deforming. Other than that, patient can develop cardiovascular syphilis. As I said, that it causes inflammation of the vessels. It causes end arthritis. It causes aortitis, inflammation of aorta. Now, remember that all the large vessels of the body, they also get their blood supply from the vesa vesorum. Now, these vesa vesorums are the small vessels that supply the large vessels. Treponema also affects these vessels, just like they affect the vessels supplying the nerves, they also affect the vessels that are supplying the large vessels. So they cause end arthritis inflammation of those small vessels and blood supply to the large vessels is interrupted, resulting in damage of aorta. This is a picture showing aortic dilation. Look at the abnormal curvature of aorta. Aorta does not have an abnormal curvature, irregular curvature like this. This is a patient who is affected with aortitis in tertiary syphilis. In tertiary syphilis, it can also enter brain. It can cause acute meningitis, typically an aseptic meningitis. It can also cause a damage of the dorsal column in the spinal cord. In the spinal cord, the dorsal part, the upper part of the spine basically supplies the sensory information to the brain. So the dorsal aspect, dorsal aspect of the spinal cord is damaged, is affected in tertiary syphilis and it damages the nerves that are taking signals to the brain, the sensory information to the brain, the proprioception, the touch information. Therefore, a person who does not receive proprioceptive information from the feet is unable to sense that the, his feet are, are there on the ground. Therefore, the patient will develop broad base gait. There will be absent deep tendon reflexes. There will be dysthesias, abnormal painful sensations. So it affects the sensory neurons, tabes dorsalis. So the tertiary syphilis causes formation of gammas. It causes destruction of aorta, aortitis. It causes aseptic meningitis. It causes tabes dorsalis, destruction of the sensory system of the body. Tertiary syphilis can also result in formation of argyle Robertson pupil. In argyle Robertson pupil, pupils accommodate, accommodate to near or far away thing, but they do not react to light. They do not constrict when you show light to the eyes. So argyle Robertson pupil accommodate, but they do not respond to light. So remember, syphilis has a wide spectrum of symptoms. And it is known as the great imitator because it imitates many diseases. It mimics many diseases. There are so many problems associated with syphilis that it is called as a great imitator. Now coming to congenital syphilis. In congenital syphilis, intrauterine transmission, if the mother is infected with syphilis, it can transmit the syphilis to the infant. And it is called as an early infection if within less than two years of age, kid infant develops infection they are mostly asymptomatic they develop persistent rhinitis hepatosplenomegaly and jaundice but if it is a late congenital syphilis after two years of age patient starts to develop infection patients will have sensory neural deficit they will have sensory neural deafness they will develop inflammation of the eye cornea interstitial keratitis they will have dental abnormalities dental abnormalities include hutches and teeth I'll show you the picture of Hutchison teeth. Mulberry molars. Mulberry molars are poorly developed first molars. Saber shins, anterior bowing of the tibia. That is called as a Hutchison triad in which the infant has sensory neural deficit, interstitial keratitis, inflammation of the uh, cornea, dental abnormalities. 
This is a picture showing hutches and teeth, which are basically notch teeth. There is a notch in the middle of the teeth. Look at the notch. Look at the notch in the teeth. This is a picture showing saber shins, anterior bowing of the tibia. These are the pictures showing congenital syphilis. Now coming to the diagnosis of syphilis, the syphilis is diagnosed with few screening tests and then there are confirmatory tests. The screening tests are non-treponemal tests and confirmatory tests are called as treponemal tests, the specific tests, FTA, ABS being the most important specific confirmatory test for syphilis. We'll discuss each one of these. Remember, in primary syphilis, dark field microscopy is the most important test. It is the most specific, but it can only be done. Dark field microscopy can only be done in primary syphilis. What you do in primary syphilis is that with dark field microscopy, you look at the syphilis bacteria. And it is most important only for the primary syphilis. It is not important for secondary or tertiary. In secondary or tertiary syphilis, you have to perform the screening test, the non-treponemal test. So in secondary syphilis and tertiary syphilis, you have to perform RPR, VDRL. RPR, VDRL are the screening tests for secondary and tertiary syphilis. For primary syphilis, dark field microscopy is the diagnostic test. Why? Because in primary syphilis, the bacteria has entered the body and yet the immune system has not formed antibodies against it. RPR and VDRL basically detect antibodies against the bacteria. And in primary syphilis, there is not enough time for the body to produce antibodies against it. So antibody tests are usually negative in the primary syphilis. The RPR, VDRL are usually negative in the primary syphilis. So in primary syphilis, we go for dark field microscopy. But for secondary and tertiary, RPR and VDRL are used. A titer of RPR with greater than or equal to 1 ratio 8 with the typical rash is diagnostic for syphilis. Remember, VDRL, a test for a screening test for syphilis, can also be positive in few conditions. It, in, it can be positive in pregnancy, it can be positive in viral infection with drugs like chlorpromazine, procanamide, rheumatic fever, which is rare, lupus, and leprosy. Remember, the most commonly tested one is the lupus. In SLE, patients usually have a positive VDRL. In antiphospholipid syndrome, patients usually have a positive VDRL. The confirmatory test for cephalus include treponemal tests, which is FTA-ABS. So remember, for primary, dark field microscopy. For secondary, RPR and VDRL. For screening and for confirmation, FTA-ABS is used. And in tertiary cephalus, if there is brain involvement, if the patient has CNS involvement, if the patient is having tertiary cephalus and there is chances of meningitis, that patient has developed meningitis, what you should do is you should do lumbar puncture, get the fluid and perform serology on that CSF that is most sensitive, most specific for the meningitis, for CSF involvement, for CNS involvement of syphilis. So in tertiary syphilis, if the patient is having meningitis, signs of meningeal irritation, you should do lumbar puncture and perform serology on CSF. Other than that, you can go for angiography to look for aneurysm, chest CT, screen for HIV and other STDs. So these are the tests that you should have in your mind. But the main ones are the screening tests and the confirmatory tests. Now coming to the treatment of syphilis. As dreadful as this disease sounds, the treatment is very simple. The treatment is penicillin. Benzathine penicillin is the drug of choice for syphilis. Primary, secondary and early latent syphilis. Early latent infection is the infection within one year of onset of symptoms. In these cases, you can use single IM dose 2.6 million units of benzathine penicillin intramuscularly. A single dose is enough. So the treatment is very simple. If the patient is allergic to penicillin, you can treat with doxycycline or ceftriaxone. In late latent syphilis, late latent means that greater than one year after the onset of symptoms. In tertiary, or even which the date of transmission is unknown, 10 million units of IM benzathine penicillin G weekly is given for three weeks. So a huge dose is given in tertiary syphilis because it has spread a lot throughout the body. If the patient is having neurosyphilis, IV penicillin G is given for 10 to 14 days. And if the patient is allergic to penicillin in tertiary phase, in late latent or in neurosyphilis, if the patient is allergic to penicillin, what you must do is that you should desensitize the patient to penicillin and give penicillin. In primary, secondary and early latent, 
If the patient is allergic, we use doxycycline. But in these phases, in neurosyphilis, in tertiary, in late latent, we cannot give anything else. This penicillin is the most important drug. Even if the patient is allergic, you desensitize the patient and you give penicillin. A phenomena that is seen 24 hours after the treatment with penicillin G that is called as gerish huxheimer reaction. Patient starts to develop fever, chills, hypotension, tachycardia. In the past, the doctors, when they saw gerish huxheimer reaction, they would get happy that, okay, the patient is responding to the treatment. But these days, we treat it with NSAIDs or opiate meptazinol can also be used. So the gerish huxheimer reaction can occur after 24 hours of the treatment and the patient can have fever, chills and hypotension. This is a picture showing the rash in gerish huxheimer reaction. In summary, we talked about treponema pallidum, we talked about the transmission, the pathophysiology, the stages of infection, primary lesions, chancre, secondary lesions on the palms and soles, latent infection, early latent, late latent, tertiary syphilis, gummas, cardiovascular involvement, meningitis, stabis dorsalis, congenital syphilis, Hutchison triad, screening with RPR, VDRL, confirmatory test, FTA, ABS, dark field microscopy only for primary syphilis, and in secondary, tertiary, do RPR, VDRL for screening, confirmatory with FTA, ABS. If the patient has CNS involvement, go for lumbar puncture. The other test treatment with penicillins, a single dose IM in primary, secondary, early latent, and in late latent tertiary and neurosyphilis, a huge dose of penicillin is given. Cherish Huxheimer reaction and its treatment. If you liked my video, please click on the subscribe button and check out my other videos on infectious medicine and emergency medicine. The link of those videos is given in the description below. Thank you very much.